Hi, I'm John from Two Brothers RC, and we've owned the EC1500 from eFlight for two years in two different versions, the original Coast Guard style and the Air Force variant. Both of them are exceptional aircraft, except that the new USAF version is a major improvement over what was already one of the best prop planes that Horizon ever built. Let's get right into the strengths of the EC-1500. It's not exactly promoted as a dedicated 3D plane since it's more of a hybrid, but it flies exceptionally well for a twin foam plane. And it is a foamy, not a woody, so the purists that think of 3D only in terms of balsa might be scoffing. But it's hard to scoff at something flying as well as this does. What you're seeing here is the mark of a well-built aircraft. It performs post-stall maneuvering and standard controlled flight equally well, which is not always the case with every plane that you'll ever fly. Contrary to what you might have heard from other reviewers in the distant past, this thing has way more potential than you were led to believe. This big cargo plane will perform most standard 3D maneuvers like upright harriers, inverted harriers, rolling harriers, flat spins, etc, etc. Even if you don't care about 3D, the EC-1500 being able to perform these maneuvers means that it will be able to perform standard acro even better, or fly in circles even better if that's more to your liking. A plane that can perform 3D well is a plane that flies well in general, as a rule of thumb. This is the kind of flying that I love doing most with my aircraft, and the EC-1500 lets me get away with it. These props are super sharp, and the speeds they're spinning at would put my flesh in real danger if I messed up. It's solid enough to hover and walk with. Pretty sure you won't have any issues flying it, so long as you treat it well. If you use Harrier mixing, you can get a super stable Harrier pass with the wing surfaces providing total stability. Then use snap flap mixing to pop it right into a hover without gaining altitude for total control. Once the nose is past 50 degrees, it can be flown post-stall with no wing rocking, making Harrier passes super easy even if you make it move like a ballerina. It's the best plane for Harriers that Horizon has ever sold in our opinion. One of the major reasons why it flies so well is the dog tooth added to the outboard section of the wing plus the tiny vortex generators which provide a noticeable amount of stall resistance and it keeps the EC-1500 controllable at slower speeds. You really have to work hard to stall this plane because if it drops a wing, all it means is that you didn't have enough throttle to keep it flying. The angle of attack is almost irrelevant so long as you compensate for it with additional thrust. This is one of my favorite aircraft to fly, so it is kind of hard to come up with negatives, but one of the major negatives off the top of my head from V1 to V2 is that the wheels still sound pretty bad. This is common in foam aircraft and the EC-1500 is no exception because the wheels have that typical dumpster rolling down five flights of stairs sound that you can add some super lube to in order to minimize it. But you may wish to consider upgrading to Dubro 2.5 inch low bounce wheels for the mains and 1 and 3 quarters inch wheels for the nose to get nearly silent operation. Thanks to high stakes on our Discord server for these mods to their EC1500. The wheel upgrade adds about 120 grams to the all up weight, which is not insignificant. So if the noise does bug you, I would recommend that you consider doing this. That's really the only downside that I can come up with. I'm not exactly impartial here since I love this plane, and before someone says that's because Horizon sent it to you, I bought my first EC-1500 and loved it too, and all of the major issues from version 1 were fixed with version 2, including having airflow through the aircraft for battery cooling, integrated voltage telemetry with the Avian ESC, and better servos. Version 2 fixed every issue I had with version 1, and the servo changeout is especially impressive since my go-to servo recommendations would have cost me $60 if the stock servos weren't as good as they are now. And yes, it is a cargo plane, which means you can basically drop anything that'll fit within the hatch, like a GoPro attached to a parachute.
or TNT snap pops en masse. Other people drop toy paratroopers or ping pong balls. And if you drop a GoPro, make sure you fold the parachute loosely because it may not deploy, if you don't. Speaking of water, no review of this plane would be complete without showing it on floats. This is so much fun and looks so wrong that you may be wondering why you hadn't done it before. A float flying cargo plane that's capable of 3D acrobatics and lands as graceful as a swan was not something that I saw in my future as an RC pilot. But here we are. Now that we're on water, a downside, if you can call it that, is that the props will bite into the water thrown up by the floats. It looks like my dog Tucker shaking himself dry. Fortunately, it doesn't hurt the electronics. The servos don't care and the props don't even notice it. You get a free water show. Not bad for the cost of the plane. All of the acro potential that you saw with the wheels out translates to the floats being on. It's even more fun to fly like this in my viewpoint. Sure, there's some danger involved, but version 2 has integrated reverse thrust if you're using a spectrum transmitter. So if you get stuck somewhere, just don't get stuck anymore. Landings can be a little bit easier, but you'll want to land flat, not at an angle, otherwise you'll risk a prop strike on the float which will destroy the nacelle. It's repairable with Gorilla Glue, but better to be aware than to have to fix it yourself. It's not really a downside in my view, since landing poorly should come with consequences. There are physics involved in flying after all. It is an aircraft, not a monster truck. Boat. Monster trope. It's a plane. Don't smash it into stuff and expect it to keep working. I can't stress this enough, people. If you can land even decently well, the EC-1500 will reward you with an airframe that lasts a long time. Our V1 is still in flyable condition after hundreds of flights and still looks pretty decent for its age and the amount of stress that we put it through. It's not hard to fly, but it is difficult to master, and that brings a level of enjoyment to flying it that I've come to appreciate over the last two years. When you get to know an airframe's limits from flying in every way you can imagine, you get to see yourself improving as a pilot. This is a fun platform to improve your skills with. It's for all of these reasons that the EC-1500 has earned a solid 10 out of 10 from us, a complete rarity. Whatever minor issues there are, really aren't worth complaining about. It's as sporty as you want it to be, or as aggressively 3D as you can expect a twin cargo plane to fly. You can drop stuff, you can probably pick stuff up, and you can go into the comment section and say that we're Horizon shills, because we won't give it anything less than what it's due. See you guys on our Discord server, and be sure to launch it off for us like a rocket.